episode 4 barbecue heart i gave this problem difficulty of very hard in the table but it's not a problem per se it's art some problems don't want to teach you anything they don't care if you solve them or not they're just beautiful and this is one of these problems <coughs> let's recap the statement um, well, technically in the statement there is something about skewers and uh, barbecue and stuff, but what you should read in the statement is that you are given n pairs of numbers a, i, b, i, and uh, we want to calculate the sum over all uh, pairs i, j, such that i is smaller than j of this binomial coefficient. So choose from uh, AI plus AJ plus BI plus BJ, uh, choose AI plus AJ. Uh, N is big, so we cannot just try all the pairs, but A and B are rather small. We can start solving the problem by removing a symmetry. Uh, we ask to calculate the sum of some function uh, over i smaller than j but our function is symmetric so we're actually like asked to calculate it um, for all unordered pairs but let's just calculate it for all pairs and then understand how to change the answer so if uh, we have some symmetric function and we ask to calculate the sum of this function over all unordered pairs of different elements or like sum over uh, i smaller than j f i j uh, we can instead calculate uh, sum over all ordered pairs uh, well we want to calculate the sum over all ordered pairs of different elements to say that uh, our answer is half of that, uh, but instead we can calculate the sum over all pairs and subtract the sum over the same element twice. So that's basically like how we get this formula. We take all pairs, remove the ones where i is equal to j, and then each pair calculated twice, so we divide by 2. Our function is symmetric. Uh, and this sum is, uh, can be easily calculated in linear time. So we can focus on uh, calculating this sum instead. From here, magic starts. Uh, let's remember episode one of um, uh, where we discussed that binomial coefficient is the number of uh, well, in that problem it was downright pass from um, like some point to some other point, so the number of paths that only go right and down, and these two parameters should be the change in coordinates. Right? Uh, if we change it to upright pass, that will be the number of paths that only go uh, up or right from some point to the same point uh, shifted by vector vh. So the number of paths starting here to here, you can see two of those paths um, on the picture. So uh, we are asked to calculate the sum, and we can see it as uh, the number of ways to choose uh, choose i, choose j, and then like choose something, a number of which. Uh, 
is equal to this number and we know that that's the number of upright paths uh, in the grid with given uh, width and height. So what I'm attempting to do here is to uh, apply like combinatorial techniques, like combinatorial proof, bijective proof, double counting, like they are all connected. So I am asked to calculate like this formula, purely mathematical uh, thing, just uh, algebraic. Uh, what I want to do instead is to say that, okay, this formula counts the number of some combinatorial objects or like the number of ways to do something. And if we can understand that this formula is equal to uh, number of combinatorial objects and then we can calculate the number of those combinatorial objects in some other way, the number we will find is the answer. So right now, it's not very helpful. That's just like uh, the number to, uh, the way to understand the sum. Like we choose a summand and then this summand is an upright pass in something, something, something. It's not very helpful. But we can try to make it more interesting. Um, let's introduce points ci and dj. Uh, so ci has coordinates minus ai and minus bi, and dj is uh, a point aj bj. So uh, we have two sets of points. The symmetric uh, with respect to origin, so this is a point ci, this is a point dj. Then if we look at point ci and point dj, the vector between them has coordinates ai plus aj and bi plus bj. That was why we defined the points like that. So if we look at the grid where these points are the corners of the rectangular grid, uh, this binomial coefficient will be the number of upright paths from one corner to the other, so from CI to DJ. Thus, again, we can uh, reform uh, reformulate what we want to count. We want to count the number of ways to choose i, so it's the same as choose ci, choose j, it's the same as choose dj, uh, and then we choose an upright path from ci to dj. So that sounds much better now, because uh, Basically, what we want to count is number of ways to start at some point in this set, then somehow go upright and end up in one of points in this set. How can we count the number of ways to go from uh, some point to some point? Well, uh, we know that it's binomial coefficient, but also we, we can easily calculate it uh, using uh, dynamic programming, uh, just like on this grid, for each point calculate the number of ways to come to it. And then for each point, it's sum of number of ways to come in it uh, from down direction and from uh, left direction. Uh, which are already calculated. So that's for 
one start and one finish. Can we do something similar for multiple starts and multiple finishes? Well, yes. Uh, let's introduce dummy start point, dummy finish point, and we will uh, well do what we wanted to calculate just formally. Like from this point, we want to go to one of the starts. Then we want to move along the grid somehow, end up in one of them, and then move to finish. So if we draw the grid edges up and right uh, everywhere, and edges from start to all of our CIs, and edges from all of DJs to finish, then what we want to calculate is the number of directed paths from S to T. And uh, this graph is acyclic and it has uh, O of n plus C square vertices and edges, where C is limitation on um, numbers A, I and B, I. And so in this graph, we can calculate the number of directed paths from C to T uh, using the dynamic programming on DAC in uh, time linear from the size of this graph, which is uh, O of n plus C square. Uh, I did it like that uh, just to make it uh, like strict and formal. But what we will actually do, like we will not build a graph that will probably actually get time limit just because like 10 million edges is a lot. Uh, if you want to like, push back them in vectors, that will be slow. What we will actually do is just say, okay, uh, we can start here, here and here. And there is one way to do that. Uh, and we will basically calculate the same dp uh, on the grid. Uh, just we start not in like lower left corner, but in some positions. So we put uh, like there is already one way to arrive at this vertex. We just start there. Then we calculate the dp, like propagate. Uh, up and right and after we calculate uh, that for every point there will be the number of ways to arrive at it but that means like choosing some start and then moving uh, up and right from it among other points this dp will be calculated for our points dj and we just take the sum of dp values in these points and that will be the answer that's it for episode 4 thanks for watching